Hi, welcome to NFPA Link YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering any question or challenge you have related to electrical and life safety. And we're going to use NFPA Link to do it. The easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards. Today, we've been asked to cover the important points of an operating room. Let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to direct, which is the pin drop. We're gonna select our filter of space and go down and select operating room. And you will see that we have several options. We are going to choose operating room electrical. And you will see a picture of what we would say is a normal operating room. We're going to talk about anesthetizing locations, which are covered in 517.60A for their use. And this needs to be wired a little differently because it could be a class one, division one location, depending on the type of anesthetizing gases that are stored there and used there. So you will want to pay attention to that 517-60-61 area and make sure that you wire that accordingly. Power distribution is a huge piece of this. We're going to look at the operating room electrical and you'll see we have a diagram here. It talks about a normal source and an alternate power source. There are two types of power in an operating room. One is normal utility power that go to non-essential loads. And the other one is the essential electrical system or EES. There are two types of EES and they are a type one system. And those are for category one or operating room. They can also be put into category two, three, or four, but in those spaces, it is not required. It is required in a category one space and operating. The EES is broken up into three separate systems. We'll go back up here to our diagram, and you'll see that it is an equipment branch, a life safety branch, and the critical branch. Category one spaces or operating rooms get their power from the critical branch and normal power, which is taken to uh, red color, typically receptacles. Uh, those are usually designated as the emergency or uh, cert, uh, receptacles connected to the critical branch. And we'll cover that in a bit. And you'll see that they uh, category one space in the OR um, is backed up by uh, alternate power sources that are covered in 51730B. And we will talk about those in a minute. We're gonna jump back and we'll use the back button and we're gonna go to a selective coordination. Now, selective coordination is covered in 51731G, and we can select that. And it's talking about the overcurrent protective devices serving the essential electrical system, EES, shall be coordinated for the period of time that a fault duration extends beyond 0.1 second. So you wanna make sure in a category one or operating room and today we're talking about the operating room so in an operating room you do not want circuits uh, a branch circuit that trips maybe in there just due to a fault in that particular operating room that might just trip that branch circuit you don't want it tripping other items that are on that essential electrical system the ees uh, so that it doesn't take something else out in maybe a different room or another piece of equipment. Now we're going to jump back and we're going to talk about operating room branch circuits. We're going to click two back. We're going to jump into operating room branch circuits. 
Now, the operating room, again, considered a class or category one critical care space, and that's determined by the governing body. In the cat one space, most operating, which are most operating rooms, the requirement for two separate branch circuits exists. One for normal power and one from the EES, which is essentially normal power backed up by an alternate power source, such as a generator or a battery. And you will see here that they have separate transfer switches for each of those. They are all connected to normal power, so utility power, but then the equipment branch, life safety branch, and critical branch are backed up by an alternate source. Now, we're gonna jump back real quick to the power distribution. And I wanna point out that there are some areas in the operating room for these sources to have automatic and those are covered in 517.32 that require automatic connection so some of these branch circuits may have delayed connection if they're not an essential piece of equipment if you have somebody that's on a a heart machine or a bypass machine that's something that's got to hook right to a uh, emergency circuit so that it does not uh, cease to operate and the person uh, that is the patient could be injured or killed next thing we're going to talk about is grounding and bonding and we're going to jump back into our operating room electrical and grounding is important, it's critical in the operating room since most patients in those spaces are likely having surgery and may be in contact with devices that are connected to electricity or that utilize electricity. When the human skin is cut open or the under layers below the skin are exposed, the person's resistance to electric shock is reduced. So if you have uh, your chest open or they're doing surgery, you are more susceptible to an electric shock. So sometimes you will see separate uh, power or separate grounding jacks that are used in these areas here to create a more equal potential between the equipment that's in contact with the patient and the patient. So sometimes you will see, depending on the type and how it's set up, the patient, it's himself or herself, may be connected to uh, an actual uh, grounding connection so that they're actually grounded. And they would need to uh, have that wrapped around uh, some part of their body so it's in direct connection. Now we're gonna talk about the operating room lighting. We'll jump back here we'll go to our operating room lighting. You have three typical lighting. You have normal illumination, task illumination, and then emergency illumination. So emergency illumination would be like your egress lighting if the power went out so that you could uh, egress or leave the room. Your task illumination, which could be considered uh, critical, depending on what it is, such as lighting for surgical tables or lighting in areas of the room to access supplies that are needed for surgery, um, or lighting for equipment essential to the surgical task, those would more than likely be connected to the critical branch or some form of an uninterruptible power supply. Your normal lighting would be of course, as it alludes to just your normal lights that are on. So we're gonna jump back and we're gonna go into the last thing that we're gonna cover and that's operating room receptacles. You will see a green dot in these receptacles. That indicates hospital grade. Now, the red indicates the 
receptacle is connected to the critical branch circuit and those receptacles you will see that each operating room has a total of 36 receptacles divided between at least two branch circuits. At least 12 receptacles, but not more than 24, are connected to normal power. And 12, but not more than 24, are connected to the critical branch of the EES that is supplied by a different transfer switch. So the receptacles that are located adjacent to each other, if uh, essential equipment is wanting to be connected in here, you would want these on different uh, branch uh, circuits or different uh, transfer switches such that if uh, an emergency happened, power was lost, um, that the transfer switches would, uh, would properly connect and there would not be an interruption in the power. We hope that answered a lot of your questions about an operating room. Be sure to visit nfpa.org forward slash link and give Link a try if you haven't already. As you just saw, Link is truly a window to productivity.